Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Welcome to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Welcome to Salina, Ohio, and the 39th annual Salina Lake Festival and Car Show. This quiet little Midwest town closes its downtown streets and turns its courthouse square into a car show extraordinaire. They have hundreds of cars show up, even some that like to swim. Joining me now is Tom Hendricks, the chairman of the car show portion of this. Welcome to Salina. Great to be here, Tom. Now, I, now wait a minute, I just said it was the 39th annual and your t-shirt says 30th. Don't make me a liar. <laughs> I won't. 39 years as a festival, 30 years as a car show. Man, so for 30 years, the car show has been a key part of this, eh? Every year. Man, and it just keeps growing? Growing and growing. We went from three, four, five cars around the courthouse over here. Now we're up to four, five, six hundred cars. Man, and they're coming from all over too, right? All over, all the connecting states. And we I even saw some from Canada down there as well. Uh, well, those, those Canadians like it. Now, you've, I mentioned you got some cars that like to swim. You got a big group of Amphicars coming in, right? Amphicars this year. We're, they're going to make us our their national convention spot. There's 30, 40, maybe 50 of them here. A world record, I believe. That is. Well, you've got the perfect setting. The, the town's right on this beautiful lake and they can you know go in and Amphicar people are all crazy anyway. They are crazy. They drive around on the streets all day here and the next thing you know they drive right into the water and they're all out in the water so we never know where they're going to be. <laughs> and this is such a wonderful small town festival. It really is. Small town USA at its best. Everybody's happy and it's our festival. We're proud of it. We're glad to have you here and everybody's real tickled today. Uh, that's great. Now you got what, three, four, five, six hundred cars here at least and they're broken into all sorts of different categories, is that right? They are. We've got something for everybody. We go everywhere from factory production to the bone stock original cars all the way to the full blown hot rods. We've got something for everybody. Man, well, everybody seems to be having a good time. You're smiling. Every, what I've noticed is that everybody here is smiling. It's just, it's just small town America. It really is. That's what it's all about. Everybody's having a good time. We're all tickled to death to be here. It's a good time. That's great. Well, we're going to get around and check some of these babies out. Maybe, maybe go for a swim in one of those Ampha cars, too. <laughs> I hope you do. Thanks a lot, Tom. All right. We'll see you. This small, quiet town with a population of 10,000 turns into a car mecca every August. Each year, the city fathers close down the streets around the courthouse for a spectacular show and shine. The Amphicar contingent loves this location so much, they made the Salina Car Show the site of their national meet. The Amphicar owners are a breed apart, and they love to get their cars wet. To top it off, this might have been the largest gathering of Amphicars ever. Man, Mike, this is one trick 57. This car is beautiful. Did you do all the work on this car? Yeah, done everything. Uh, except for the interior, my brother done that. Well, was it a, was it a rough car when you started? It was pretty nice, and you know. It was falling down over the frame right. when I started, <laughs> so I had to replace every piece of metal. Well, I tell you what, what caught my eye though is this this color, this kind of purple. What, what do you call it? It's a, it's a wild cherry. House of Color makes it. It's a pavo purple with a red candy over it. And it's it. so deep. I mean, you you must have blocked the heck out of it. You yeah. too. Yeah, I done everything. Wow, and and. The interior, I mean, first of all, I got the stunning white top, but then this beautiful white, is that leather? Yeah, all white leather. Oh, man. I love how you worked <laughs> in the digital gauges. I, I just think, you know, it's so beautiful. You've kept it, you know, stock looking, but it is thoroughly modern. That's, I didn't want to cut the car up. I oh, wanted man. to leave it all. So, you know, you got the, the original 283 or six no, banger? I got a 502 big block. 502 big block, <laughs> of course, a crate engine. <laughs> And oh, a little bit man. of chrome. Yeah, she does shine, doesn't she? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, what kind of uh, horsepower do you pump out? I uh, got a 502 crate motor with a 450 horse. Gosh. It used a little bit of gas, but <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to drive. Wow. Do, and do you drive it? Yeah, I drive it wow. everywhere. I don't trailer it. You don't tra uh, This beautiful when you don't trailer it. No. I respect that. I do love that. So I bet it's a crowd pleaser. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can take it out for a spin later. Sure. Yeah. You can even drive it. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful, Mike. Great work. Oh, Larry, this is beautiful. 33 Buick. 33 right. Buick. What what model is it? It's a model 66 S. Wow. A rumble seat coupe. A rumble. So that's a rumble seat height. Rumble back seat. Here. This is beautiful. I've never seen one of these. How many are there? The Buick Club of America has four listed. Man, and did you restore it or did you buy it? I, I bought it this way, and uh, I bought it and then showed it to my wife and asked her how she liked it. <laughs> did that work for you? It worked. She good, said, good. as long as it had a rumble seat, I don't mind. Can you open it up? I'd love to see the inside. Oh, that is, and that's just like in 33, eh? Just original interior. Oh, man, that is just Back beautiful. window rolls up and down so you can talk to people in a rumble seat or you can ignore your kids. <laughs> Either I way. Like, I like the ignore your kids route. Now, powering a uh, 33... Buick is going to be a straight eight. Straight eight. Let's have a look. Oh, nice solid. Yeah, they're solid metal. Look at that. Nicely detailed engine, too. That is just beautiful. And, and you, you drive it? Uh, we drive it as much as we can. Yeah. Now, you're a hometown boy, right? Slime I've lived in Slime my whole life. 
It's you know it's a great festival it's, you got here. It's, it's a great community and I like living here. Yeah, well, you got a couple beautiful cars and I well, really appreciate you, you sharing them with us. They're gorgeous. Appreciate you showing up for a festival. Oh, it is pretty. Dan, this is a beautiful '67 Camaro R RSSS 350. 350. Yes. Gorgeous car, but it's it's unrestored, unmodified. Yes, it is. And you bought it brand new. Yes, I did. In fact, it's the uh, first brand new car we ever bought. This it is just gorgeous. Now, how did you? I mean, how did you keep it this way? Well. Uh, we, we uh, started to get rid of it. We thought about getting rid of it in 72, and we parked it out in the garage and uh, covered up a couple of bed sheets. 24 <laughs> yeah. years later or so? And 24 years later, we <laughs> still there. We got it out and well, cleaned it up. Original vinyl top? Yes, it is. God, an original interior. Yes. Well, what's what's the, the engine bay look like? I mean, is it as nice? Uh, it's, yeah, it's fairly, fairly good shape. Oh, man. I remember these things in the showroom in 67, and that's what they looked like. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. Now, yeah, you, you, you said you detailed a little bit of it, but still within the unrestored, unmodified criteria, right? Right. Uh, you're allowed to, what I've been told, according to the national standards, you're allowed about 35%. And the only thing that we've uh, restored, or whatever you want to call it, redetailed, was the engine bay yeah. and the drivetrain all the way back. Well, this so. is beautiful. And what you've done to preserve well, it is just fantastic. I, thank you. I really respect that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The Camaro was GM's answer to the Mustang. Born more than two years after the first Mustang was let out of the corral, the Camaro had an instant impact on car sales. In 1967, Chevrolet regained the number one ranking from Ford for model year production, with the Camaro making up approximately 10% of the sales. One of those Camaros sold was this rare Royal Plum 396 SS convertible. Well, today we're in Macomb, Illinois with Mike Henniger. Mike, how you doing? How's it going, Dana? Oh, it's going great. Love this car. 67 Camaro convertible SS 396. I mean, this is a monster. You bet. It's got the 375 horse 396. And it's a pretty rare car to begin with, right? How many were, of these were made? There was 1,138 cars made with this engine in it and uh, very few convertibles, I believe. Probably less than 50. Wow. Now, this is also a, a yeah, well, and, and as you as you have it listed, it's it's my rare one, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> I believe it's one of a kind with the Royal Plum color. It's a very unique color. I've, I've never seen another Camaro with this. This was a stock color, yes. though, right? Well, I had a 67 GTO, same color scheme. It was, they called it, uh, Pontiac called it Plum Mist, but it was almost exactly this color. Very rare for that car, too. Uh, but but it, it was a factory color. They just didn't sell many of them. It wasn't very popular. I think it only was offered in 67 and never did come back any other year. Well, it's odd because it changes colors on you. I mean, it's purple in the right light. Yes, it is. It changes colors dramatically. It gets kind of brown, gets kind of black. It's one of the early color change paints. They didn't yeah. even intend it. <laughs> well, now, how long you had this car? I've had it for 13 years. I bought it off the original owner right here in Macomb. Oh, wow, so it's a hometown car. Yes, it oh, is. Oh, that is really neat. Well, it looks like a pretty highly optioned car. Did you have to restore it, or what kind of shape was it? It was in really good shape when I bought it. It's got all the original body panels on it. The interior is mostly original, except for the seats and the door panels. That's a pretty trick interior. Is that, is that the deluxe? That is the deluxe interior. And what did deluxe come with? It came with the uh, molded door panels, mm -hmm. the accent stripes on the seats, the uh, chrome steering wheel. Wow. Man, this is original. You still got the uh, the Muncie four-speed shifter. Yeah, in there. who would ever thought they'd leave that in there? <laughs> Most of those were pulled out pretty quick, weren't they? They usually replace them with her shifters pretty right. so quick, but nice gauge package. And you've also got the uh, the six six thousand RPM tack. And that I was only offered on the three seventy five horse cars and the Z twenty eights. Oh, and, and all because they were higher revving solid lifter engines. Exactly. They got the red line tires on it. You get, now this also has, does this car have disc brakes? It has factory disc brakes, which was the first year they were offered on a passenger car in 67. There can't be too many options this car doesn't have. Not really. It's got most everything. It's got the highest horsepower motor in it that was offered. Man, well, and speaking of that high horsepower motor. Would you like to take a look at it? Let's do have a look. That's always been a favorite of mine. Oh, I just yeah. love these big motors. <laughs> and big it is, 396 cubic inches, 375 horsepower, and it really cranked all of that out, didn't it? Yeah, I think it was really underrated. They used to, in 65, they were rated at four and a quarter horse. So they were lowballing it in that era a lot of times. Just for, for, insurance, yeah, purposes. for insurance purposes. Now what all came with this, with this engine, with the 375 horse? That came out with the chrome package on the air, the air cleaner and the valve covers. It had the aluminum intake with the 780 Holley carburetor. 11 to 1 compression ratio. Man. 
Four bolt mains. Four bolt mains. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now this, uh, but you said this has got a, what a two seventy three rear end. Yes, that's what a very an, unusual combination to what have an that. Odd combination. Have this high horsepower engine with the two seventy three rear end. So you could, uh, I mean, you can get some high turnpike speeds with that. It's exactly. not really a drag car. But yeah, the original owner told me that he had it clear back to zero on the speedometer on a desert highway one night. Well, that's probably well in excess of 120 miles an hour. Exactly. It'll well, run 120 miles an hour in third gear. Man, what can you do in first? 60 or 70. <laughs> what, a, what a weird combo. So you can't drag it, but you, you can still cruise it, right? It'll go fast. Too. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's go fast. Let's do it. All right. Oh, yeah. Bumblebee stripe, red line tires. I'm back in time. healthy sound too. You bet. What a wonderful afternoon. Sunshine, pleasant temperatures, and a ride in this primo Camaro. Mike's pride in his automobile was very evident as we cruised the back roads near his hometown. So, so what's the whole drivetrain set up here? You got the 396, 375 horse. It's got the M21 four speed with 273 gears. Rather unusual combination. I'll say, and you've got the disc brakes. Yeah, that was the first year that they were offered on any passenger car. That's got to make this even more rare, because not a lot of people opted for those as an option. It was a new thing. And was there something special about the Camaro that, uh, you know, that, that you always wanted one? Or how'd you come by this? Well, actually, I just, I was restoring another Camaro convertible when I bought this car. And I heard through a friend about it. And I went and looked at it and realized it was a 375 horse 67 convertible and I had to buy it. So you just knew it was a rare car? I knew it was a rare car when I, as soon as I saw it. It was a must have, right? So I was like, I couldn't resist. Now when you were looking into how rare this thing was, I mean, did you kind of look around the country and talk to a lot of folks? Or? Yeah, I talked to a lot of car collectors like out on the East Coast. And I've, I've visited with quite a few people all over the country. And what did, what did they tell you about it? Well, just a handful of them around. Possibly, close as I could find out, there's only like four or five cars like this. And when you say like this, you mean con convertible for this engine? And yeah, convertible 375 horse. <laughs> oh, Mike, nice ride. Hey, would you kick it one time? I sure would. I love that sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big block rumble. It's a great car. You know, I might just have to get me one of these. Were you going to find another one just like it? Well, well I want this one, oh, actually. Okay. <laughs> All I need is a big check, right? That's right. Big check for the big block. That's right. Ooh, but plum, I got to have. It's very nice. Thank you cool very much. Cool car. Cool car. Thank you very much.